in this lecture, <coughs> excuse me, in this lecture we'll be looking at the epithelial tissues that produce and release secretions, the glandular epithelial tissues. So a gland is an epithelial cell or a cluster of epithelial cells that make and pro that produce and then release secretions into the body. And there are two kinds of glands in the body. There are endocrine glands, and these are glands that secrete their, that, that, that put their secretion directly into the extracellular fluid that is around the cell that is making the secretions, or some of them will release directly into blood because the blood supply is right near where the secreting um, the, the secreting cell is. <clears throat> the secretions, if it's an endocrine gland, are called hormones and these are just chemical messengers that are sent around the body and they change the activity of target body cells. The blood is used to carry the hormones out to the target tissues and um, although you know, and, and many of what, when we talk about the endocrine system, we're talking about a number of glands. Most of them are epithelial tissues. The glandular tissue in the, in the organ is an epithelial tissue, but some of them are derived from nervous tissue. So it's not always, if we say something is endocrine, it doesn't always mean that there is an epithelial uh, cell doing the secreting. Sometimes it's a nervous cell. The glands that we're going to spend more time on in this chapter, though, are the exocrine glands. If endocrine means that it's secreted inside the body, the exocrine glands are ones that secrete their, um, their products, the, the, the glandular secretion, into a duct, and that duct funnels the secretion to the apical surface, up to the free surface. So if it's an exocrine gland, then we can recognize that because the secretion is being delivered directly to the free surface, that apical surface of the epithelium. Other, you know, so in comparison, the endocrine glands, remember, they are secreting directly into the extracellular fluid rather than going to a duct to get to the apical surface. There are some single-celled exocrine glands um, and so we still think of them as exocrine glands because when they release their secretions, they are released to the apical surface of whatever structure the epithelium is a part of. So some examples of these kinds of exocrine glands are the sweat glands that we see on the skin, salivary gl glands that we find in delivering to the apical surfaces inside the mouth, the tear glands that deliver directly to the skin's or surface, well, to the eye and uh, uh, surface. The mucus glands that are found uh, lining prim the respiratory passage passages, the digestive passageways, and the reproductive system passageways. And then the acid glands that are associated with the lining of the stomach or, a, yeah, that's, that's the place. So um, there are many other exocrine glands in the body, but that's just a, a brief list of some examples. So as we classify exocrine glands, we can talk about unicellular exocrine glands um, and multicellular exocrine glands. So uh, a unicellular exocrine gland is a single cell, as the name uni cellular uh, suggest. So there isn't a duct. The duct is part of a multicellular gland. But they are exocrine because, as I mentioned before, they secrete to the apical surface. And uh, the goblet cells, you've seen them already now as we were talking about the, um, uh, it was the pseudostratified uh, columnar epithelium. Those goblet cells are an example of a single-celled exocrine gland. They're the ones that produce the mucus, um, the glycoprotein that, that forms mucus when it is mixed with water. So unicellular exocrine glands or multicellular, and as the name suggests, that means that there are multiple cells. And there are, are two kinds of cells, two types of cells in a multicellular exocrine gland. 
they're the the cells that actually produce the secretion. They're the secretory cells, and then there are the cells that uh, that form the duct, and they're the duct cells, as the name would suggest. So, for example, the sweat glands and the salivary glands both deliver their watery secretions to the apical surface, traveling through a tube that is built of duct cells. And so we'll look in a minute at what some of the secretory cells look like and the shapes that the duct cells can form as they um, build the duct. So let's uh, so we can classify them whether, by whether they're s single celled or multicellular. We can also classify uh, exocrine glands by the branching or lack of branching that's associated with the duct itself. It is a simple gland if the duct portion does not does not branch. So in these pictures, everywhere that the cells look dark. Those are the secretory cells. And everywhere that the cells are lighter, those are the duct cells. And notice that in all four examples of, these are the four examples here, of the simple exocrine glands, the duct itself, that ductal portion, does not branch. Um, and sweat glands follow this kind of, um, this kind of uh, style. So they tend to be like this, these simple coiled tubular duct glands. Now, we can also look at the, class, you know, and, and we will in the next slide, we'll look at classifying based on the um, secretory portions and the shapes that those will form. A compound duct has the duct branching, or a compound exocrine gland has the duct branching before it reaches the secretory units. So um, so here we see a branch point, here's a second branch, and a third branch. So this single duct opening has three branches, and each one of these branches has its own completely separated secretory unit. Whereas up here, there's a single secretory unit. Here we can see that there's nothing but secretory cells there. Same with this one. Um, and so, for example, we see this kind of uh, construction in the salivary glands that are located um, around, you know, like beneath the lower jaw. Um, there's one place where we can find salivary glands. Um, and they are all compound glands. And then we can look finally at the uh, structure of the secretory portion of the exocrine gland in order to do some classification. It may be tubular, in which case the secretory unit, the portion that secretes, is just a long tube. And here we can see long tubes. And sweat glands look like this, and I should have, some sweat glands look like this, some sweat glands are coiled like that too. Um, it could be alveolar, and this term alveoli or alveolar, we'll see that again when we get to the respiratory system, but that means it's in a grape-like cluster. So, um, so if it's alveolar, then you'll see a secretory that looks like a little cluster of grapes here we see it again, alveolar. And if it's compound, then each branch of the compound alveolar um, uh, structure has its own secretory unit. So we can see that there is even further branching deeper into the, um, the, um, the gland. And the mammary glands are like this. So we see compound alveolar um, mammary glands. Okay, so we can. There's a third way that we can classify um, exocrine glands, and that is by the method that they use to secrete. And there are three terms: marocrine, apocrine, and holocrine. In marocrine secretion, and that is this picture here at the top. 
we see that the secretion is released by that process, exocytosis, where a vesicle with the secretion inside of it is sent to the inner surface of the uh, of the, s the secretory cells, and then exocytosis releases the secretion out into the the space made by the duct cells, and salivary and sweat glands both release via merocrine secretion. So merocrine secretion is exocytosis. With apocrine secretion, the secretions will all accumulate just underneath the apical surface. Um, and they will be, they, you know, they can be in um, vesicles. So all these little vesicles will accumulate right there beneath the apical surface. And then when the body is called to release the secretion, the, the, <clears throat> the, the upper surface of the cell will pinch off and a small package containing all of these secretions is then released into the duct. And this is the way that mammary glands release milk into the ducts of, the mammary, uh, of, of, of those mammary glands. And then last of all, there is holocrine secretion. Uh, I'm going to go back for a second. Apocrine, if you can think about the fact that it is right there beneath the apical surface and that apical, that apical portion of the cell pinches off, then that's apocrine. Holocrine, in holocrine secretion, and that's the bottom picture here, what we see is that, again, the secretion accumulates in the cell and then at some point the cell membrane ruptures and the secretion along with other cell debris is also released out into the um, into the duct region and so in order to continue making secretions then the ruptured cells have to be replaced so this kills the cell to have it burst open completely and so it's the whole cell that bursts open holocrine secretion. Hopefully that will help you to remember. And sebaceous glands, the oil glands of the skin, release their secretions by holocrine secretion. Um, and that is part of what, you know, can uh, then clog up the pore of a uh, sebaceous gland, leading to uh, either a blackhead or to, um, to a pimple, to, you know, to, to a, a, an inflamed um, red blood cell filled area, I'm sorry, white blood cell filled area as, as uh, more and more white blood cells come to fight off the infection that can occur after that pore gets plugged up. So those, those cell parts are part of the plug that helps to cause acne, for instance, in young people or folks my age who still get acne too. So merocrine secretion, we see exocytosis releasing the secretion. Apocrine secretion, the top part of the cell pinches off carrying away the secretions and then the cell regrows the, those portions, becomes large again, and then later on that top part will pinch off again releasing secretions. Or holocrine secretion in which the entire cell just bursts open releasing the secretion plus all the cell contents. Um, so, let's take a look then at an image of a multicellular exocrine gland. What we see here is a hair follicle, and the hair follicle continues all the way down into here, but at this point, because of the way the slice was made, it's not shown empty. But this is where the hair would have been sitting, would have been down in this area. Um, because this region right here is where all the nutrients are coming to help grow the new hair cell or grow the hair cells so that the hair will keep on growing. So we have a, the follicle here with the, with the hair would have been extended way down to the base and it is surrounded by these sebaceous glands. So here are some clusters of sebaceous glands looks to me like it is a complex or no oh, that gummit. Yeah, one more time. Almost there. There we are. Okay, so it is um, not a simple gland, but we have multiple secretory units here. 
so here are all the secretory units of the of the um, sebaceous gland and the cells that are here that are filled up with the secretion they're the ones that are going to burst releasing their secretion into the lumen of the um, of the duct so um, the last thing that we're going to talk about is um, the two kinds of glands that we associate with um, th or that we can classify based on the type of secretion that they produce. And both of these are merocrine glands only, so they're just merocrine glands. So serous glands produce serous fluid, and we've talked about the serous fluids already. So we're talking about the pericardial um, fluid, the pleural fluid, and the peritoneal fluid. Serous glands produce this fluid that is very watery with a high concentration of enzymes. So it's lots of water and enzymes. And the serous cells are found in the visceral and the parietal membranes of the thoracic and abdominal pelvic cavities. So uh, we've talked about them a lot. Um, releases by merocrine secretion. And then mucus glands produce the secretion mucus. And it's weird, but when it's an adjective, mucus glands, it's O-U-S. But when it's a noun, it's U-S. So just mucus. That's not a typo. Um, mucus glands are, produce this fluid that is very thick and it's full of lots and lots of protein, the primary protein being mucin. And when you mix mucin with water, that produces, or that is mucus. Um, and there are two kinds of glands that produce mucus. The mucus glands, which are um, associated with the epithelia of the digestive, respiratory, and reproductive systems, as well as goblet cells, where we have those goblet cells. So. Um, one last means of classifying exocrine glands that are multicellular is into um, but basing it on the kind of secretion that they produce. All right, so there you have it. Um, we'll be moving next into the connective tissue. So hang on and tune in. Any questions? You know how to reach me.